that Cardiovascular Systems Inc. has and how it's really changed over the past five years and how it hasn't changed as well. So here's our agenda. We'll be talking about the microenvironment between the company, customers, suppliers, marketing intermediaries, and the publics. So first, I'll be talking about the company. So to describe the company's overall health over the last five years is not that great. They haven't reported a profit in the 26 years of them being in business, and they always report a loss, which overall isn't great financial health. But they report a loss because they have very high selling, general, and administration expenses, but they still haven't reported a profit in 26 years. That, too, could be due to high innovation costs that they have for their products and new products that they want to launch. But overall, looking at their portfolio, it's not that great. So, as I said, it hasn't changed that much. And, again, it's because I believe it's from their outrageous spending on their selling general and admin expenses, which also includes the marketing expenses. Also, in 2016, they have been sued and are settling legal arguments, which is also not that great because they're also being investigated, which can put a damper on their financial health. So if I were to describe the company's products mix in the USA over the last five years, I would go by the four P's, the product, place, price, and promotion. And so of each of these characteristics of their product mix, they always have to have a benefit. And so their product at Cardiovascular Systems Inc. is that they make and manufacture devices that help with like coronary artery disease and they make them specific for certain people and so the place that they sell them at is kind of word of mouth but it's also through hospitals and things like that and then price from the prices that I saw they can kind of vary um, but overall I would say that they're typically expensive um, and then promotion this company doesn't do much marketing because they're so specific on what they do, what they make, how they innovate, and how they use their actual product for the good of the like the environment and the good of you know what they do overall. But their marketing isn't fantastic. Like I would have not known personally what this company did if one my roommate was not an intern there, but two if I didn't have if I didn't research this company and kind of learn like the good that they do for the company or for you know the economy and the hospitals and for people who need these devices I guess. So the next is the customers and the overall customers of this company um, is those who have issues and need their products. So Cardiovascular Systems Inc. is devoted to developing and commercializing innovative solutions for treating peripheral and coronary vascular disease. And their primary focus is helping physicians conquer even the most difficult disease states, which include calcium, giving the complications it presents for the millions who suffer from peripheral artery disease and coronary artery disease. So those are their two products, PAD and CAD. It also stated that CSI is committed to clinical rigor consistent innovation and defining the drive to set the standard in safe, effective, economical medical devices that improve patient outcomes. So because these patient outcomes are so patient specific, they do not have a reseller market at all because they essentially make it for the patient, for its patient needs, whether it's the PAD, the CAD, or like they said, for complication with calcium intake, for example. You know, it's specific to the customer, which kind of gets kind of tricky. One of the lawsuits is stating that cardiovascular systems actually is selling their products on a black market under a different name and someone who uh, recently worked there and quit is bringing this to light. So that's one allegation that they're being investigated for. Um, their producer markets, so essentially what cardiovascular systems does is they produce from their 125,000 square foot facility in Minnesota and that's like their headquarters and then they also produce out of Texas which is their, their second location but they have the engineering and manufacturing on site so that's where they produce everything and then 
if they have governmental markets, um, they're highly regulated by the government because they're highly regu- regulated by the FDA, FDA because consumers within a government market specifically do not purchase from CSI. So the FDA eventually granted 510K clearance for the use of one of their systems in peripheral arteries in August 2007. And then in August two th- or October 2013, the company received FDA approval for the use of the Diamondback Orbital ooh, Alcatomy system in coronary arteries. So to date, over 249,000 of CSI's devices have been sold to leading healthcare institutions across the United States. So their governmental market would essentially be local governments, state governments, and then the federal government because they are such a highly regulated, or they are in such a highly regulated market within themselves that their markets would be, like I said, local, state, and federal. And then there are no international markets for um, CSI at the moment, but they hope to expand internationally. They just haven't figured out a great balance between like international laws and the FDA and things like that. So that's really put them in a bind, but they hope to get there soon. So next we'll move on to suppliers. And so who supplies the company's inputs for its out for its products? And essentially, like I said, they have moved into a 125,000 square foot headquarters in Minnesota, and it's a custom designed space for more than 500 employees and contains dedicated research and development, training and education, and manufacturing facilities. Um, And the operations dedicated space expands our production and inventory capacity significantly. So depending on their staff level, the new facility has the capacity to produce an excess of 75,000 devices per shift annually. And then the finished goods storage has capacity for nearly 20,000 devices and and more than 500 saline infusion pumps and other accessories. So... Their suppliers are actually like third-party suppliers that include single-source suppliers for them and their customers, which makes them very vulnerable to supply problems and price fluctuations because they need to come from these third-party suppliers to build their actual device to be able to produce it and bring it to market. And so while I couldn't find any of like the name of these third-party suppliers, they use lots of them because their devices are so intricate that They have to work with a varying degree of suppliers. And then how have these suppliers changed over the the last five years? And essentially they haven't because CSI has been working on the same products for the past 26 years. And to keep developing and innovating that product, they're just going through the same supplier from what I found. And so they stated that they rely on third-party suppliers to provide them with certain components of their products and to provide key components or supplies to their customers for use with our products. So they rely on single source suppliers for certain components of the PAD and CAD systems, and they depend on their suppliers to provide them and their customers with materials in a timely manner that meet their quality, quantity, and cost requirements. These suppliers may encounter problems during manufacturing for a variety of reasons, and any of which could impede on CSI's delivery time of their supply. So Another factor with CSI is that their supplier instability, I guess you could say, would could also add for price inflection or why they would be, you know, not having such a great financial portfolio over the past 26 years. That could be one of the reasons. I don't think it's the main reason, but it could be a reason. But considering they haven't changed their supplier, I don't think it's necessarily the biggest reason for them to worry about it. So next we'll talk about marketing intermediaries. And so who are the firm's intermediaries? So they have third-party payers, including private insurers and government insurance programs, such as Medicare and Medicaid, that pay for a significant portion of patient care provided in the United States. The single largest payer program in the United States is Medicare, which is a federal governmental health insurance program. And they cover certain medical care expenses for, like, the elderly and disabled individuals, which includes a large percentage of what their PAD and CAD systems are for, or devices are for. Also, private insurers follow the coverage and reimbursement policies of Medicare, so pretty much they work with, um, 
the Medicare system. CSIs, selling intermediaries, are salesmen that they hire and bring, and bring into their company to sell these devices, you know, hands on. Um, through the hospitals, they actually have them um, where they can recommend, like, the product since CSI is its own producer. And that way they can also get that too. Their physical distribution is through CSI's headquarters in Minnesota. And they don't, from what I found, use any marketing service agencies because they just bring on their own staff and market through the hospitals because they are in such a selective market. Like I said, that it would be hard for them to market, say, like in the retail space because they're not selling a retail item. So their marketing is primarily focused on those elderly care patients, you know, on Medicare or on Medicaid in the hospitals with these specific diseases that CSI's device could really help them with. Next, we'll talk about Publix. So who are the firm's financial publics? And it's their board of shareholders and how they're received. So considering this company has been running at a loss for 26 years, they're not perceived very well. And according to their 10K, they assume to run at a loss for a while. Um, when I pulled up their 10K, they actually stated that they plan on running at a loss, which I found very curious having an accounting background as to why you would allow your company to run at a loss, even if you want your company to be profitable, and to keep up innovation costs and things like that, and to keep hiring out new staff and salesmen, it costs a lot of money, and eventually when you run at a loss long enough, you'll have to end up filing for bankruptcy. So who are the firm's media publics? Uh, they are on the huge financial sites, like Yahoo Finance and MarketWatch, but also on the Star Tribune and the Pioneer, due to their current status of running at a loss, as well as being investigated. So I would say that their media presence isn't exactly positive. But I'm assuming that they get a lot of media within the hospitals, um, just because that's primarily their focus. And so, you know, brochures, things like that. Um, their governmental publics would be like their local government because they're headquartered in St. Paul and the city that they're in in Texas. And then their two state governments, as well as under federal watch all the time, especially because they are on the federal watch list just due to all their investigations right now. Um, I would assume that the government is honing in on this company. And then who are the firm's citizen action publics? So within their 10K, they explicitly stated that they want to be environmentally sound and have waste management and health and safety matters which include measures relating to the release, use, storage, treatment, transportation, discharge, disposal, and remediation of hazardous substances that are within their devices. And so for them, that would be their biggest citizen action public because if they could be portrayed as an environmentally green, sound company, that would help them not only with like their media presence, but their financial presence as well because that would also be a tax credit. So their internal Publix is David L. Martin, Lawrence L. Betterly, Kevin J. Kenny, Robert J. Thatcher, and Paul Cohn. And this is of, as of July 29, 2015. So essentially, there's a suit filed in July 2013 when the government began looking into former sales reps' allegations that CSI illegally promoted products two physicians using all-expense-paid trips to seminars and inflated sham speaking fees for doctors who widely prescribe CSI products. So, looks like they have some internal controls issues with how these men may be running the company. They've also successfully engaged in a fraudulent marketing scheme to maximize its profits through an ongoing pattern of fraud and deception involving illegal kickbacks, off-label promotion, and violations of federal laws and regulations, which is from Travis Thames, who claims he'd have seen the activity firsthand, which makes me assume that he was a former employee of this company. And so this, to me, shows that their internal publics and their internal controls are flawed. And this could be another reason why their overall financial health isn't as strong as it could be. And their financial health really affects how they market themselves because if they have a negative media presence, especially in the digital age these days, 
it's not going to make their company look great and it's not going to have the people's trust. And so for that, I would say it's not looking too positive. So here's just a couple more examples of what cardiovascular systems inc is kind of like so to compare the long term average p e for the s&p 500 is about 15 so they're looking to the growth ratio which is negative 0.38 and its price to sales is 3.36 so the s&p 500 shows a medium price sales ratio of 1.43 over the last 15 years so not great they also have an operating margin of negative 27.8 percent for context, the S&P has an operating margin of 9.9%. And any positive measure shows that they're driving a profit and have a relatively healthy financial condition. Lastly, the 26-year-old company has never reported a profit. And last year, it lost $35 million on revenue of $136 million. So overall, their financial health is not great, and that does not help their marketing in any shape, sense, or form. Thank you.